Hey, it's Don. We were at a holiday bazaar the other day with some family. We weren't sourcing, we had nothing to do with sourcing whatsoever. And while we were out, I ran into a bunch of vintage ornaments that they were selling in a basket for like a table centerpiece. And ended up getting a whole bunch of vintage ornaments at a holiday bazaar with family and friends from out of town to turn around and resell. Now I'm going to show you some of these too. We'll do some close-ups of them so you can see them. But they're just awesome looking ornaments here. I got a whole bunch of them, probably half a tree's worth or better. So let's hop over to some close-ups and we're going to show you what we found. So this first one here is one of my favorites. This is just fabulous, just fabulous. I love these sorts of things. I grew up on these. I remember going to my grandparents' house and seeing just this sort of thing. Uh, let's see here. It is marked on the top and I can't quite read it. It's a shiny bright. Now, most of the time, you can find hand-done ones or stamped ones. This one looks like it's a stamp design. This is what would be called mercury glass. It has like a mercury finish on the inside to get that metallic look. Obviously, these days, they don't use it. It's not safe, but something like this is at least 115 bucks, I would imagine, on the right day of the week, just because of the Merry Christmas on it. Let's pull out a couple more. Here's another fine example. I love the purplish uh, color on these. These are just fab on these. Semi-translucent, um, another US, made in USA, 50s-ish probably. Uh, it's got glitter. Now, earlier ones from like the turn of the century, 1900 era, will have mica, which is ground up stone on them. And some of these patterns uh, in the later ones were done with a machine of some sort, some kind of multi-stamping thing that could do a whole bunch all in a row. And then the glitter was just shaken on, either by a machine or by hand. Let's pull out one of my favorite ones here. And I've got a couple of these here. I love the atomic pattern on these. It's just fab on these. This, I would say, is a stamp. They would stamp it in glue, stamp it on the bulb, and then just sprinkle some uh, glitter on it. It's two-tone, too. The bottoms of them are one color, metallic, light bluish, and then it's got a white band, like kind of a snow. But these are mid-50s, easy, or before. Uh, same thing on these made in USA, maybe shiny brights. Nice examples either way you go. Let me grab out a couple other ones here. Now this one here um, almost looks like it's hand painted, which very well could be. It's an earlier make on this. I can't quite make out the uh, maker on it. Almost looks like it says Poland on it. Yeah, it looks like it says Poland, which a lot of them were made there. You can tell it's hand blown even. It's an earlier one. Here's a little later one, probably late 50s. Uh, looks like it has a German mark on the top of it. Looks quite fancy. I love the purple again. It's one of my favorites. Kind of icy, Christmassy look. Really nice ones on both of those. Let's pull out, uh, let's get rid of a few of these, all the same ones. These are just some standard ones. It's purple on the bottom, and then it has like a copperish band in the middle, and then purplish red on the top, like a tricolor almost. These are fairly common. Uh, they're shiny brights, it looks like, too. Yeah, it looks like shiny brights on these as well, too. Now, these here are ones you should always look for. These are indents. It has a reflector on the inside, so it reflects the light back off from all the lights on the trees. It has insects on the side. Now, this is probably stamped in there, or this is a roller that goes around this, the gold part is, and it just doesn't color it there. These are probably hand stamped in the bottom parts of the designs with glue and then sprinkled on. Many of these could have actually been done by hand, believe it or not. Um, just This is probably early. This is probably 30s or 40s, I would gather. Anything like this, you should nab up if they're vintage. Some of these I've sold for 60 70 a piece that have scenes or people in the inside of them or oddball characters on the outside. Now there's bells in there too, very nice. It has a ton of, and this looks like mica on this one. This is an earlier one, as I said, it's translucent, probably 20s or 30s. Here's a 50s version of the same thing. In fact, a couple more 50s versions of that same thing. These are imports, um, 50s, 60s, uh, West Germany era as well. Another translucent one here. In fact, here's a smaller version of that same one, basically. 
shiny brights it looks like um, nice early ones most of these a couple bucks a piece on average if you had a store you could probably do better on it the whole bunch that i'm going to show you here i should get say 150 or better out of my ten dollar investment something like the santa claus one here uh, and this is early. It does have a maker's mark. Um, this one looks like it almost says Poland on it as well. I might get 15 or 20 bucks just out of this one alone. It's in pretty good condition. It's got some dust, some dirt on it. Nice green one here with like a lacy pattern across it. Nothing super fancy. Another early American version again. Probably shiny bright. I got a couple that are similar. Let's pull these out here. These are pretty interesting. They're two tones or three tones, it looks like. Gold on the top, a lighter spray of maybe white, and then some nice swirls or almost paisley designs on the sides. Uh, made in USA as well. Probably shiny bright or something along that line. This one's a pretty interesting pattern. These are probably late 50s, somewhere in that range would be my guess. They could be a little earlier. They are translucent. Usually the translucent bulbs seem to be earlier in my book. Now this one I love here too, it has a pattern on it. It reminds me of like the 60s mod um, lamps and stuff from the, the hippie days back in the day. I love that, it's just fabulous design. This is earlier, probably 40s by the slenderness of it. A lot of these are hand blown and you can see the little uh, section on the bottom to show that. This is probably another shiny bright of some sort. Again, this is typical of what I love looking for and finding. In fact, here's a real nice one here. Here's a 50s daddy. Just awesome. Probably the parents did this. The, the child did it. It looks like it's a regular 50s or so um, one here. And something like this, again, someone might like this for nostalgia. Um, I may get, um, geez, I may get, you know, 10, 15 bucks for it. Another nice one here. Uh, just an interesting example. Now this one I love too. It's a swirl pattern on it. Again, this is early, probably 20s, 30s, maybe into the very early 40s. But either way, that's just fab on this one here. A couple bucks a piece people will be willing to pay on some of these. Let's get some of the last few bigger ones out. This one has reindeer running all the way around it. Uh, North Pole sign there. Santa Claus as well. Uh, just an awesome one here. You can see the reflection from the mirrored finish in it. Just a nice, excellent example. Here's another one of the atomic one, but this one's even better than the other one. Pink and like the turquoise blue are two of the most popular ones from the 40s and 50s. And this one is just the bomb. Um, I'm not selling this one, even if we sell the rest of them. This one's going to stay with us just because I love the design so much on that one. Uh, and here's a really nice one here, which I'll probably keep too. This is more like the genie patterns, as you see. It's got mica or glitter across it. It's early. It's got a small one, a uh, small neck up there. Has the small indented nipple like you would see on the cast ones, the blown ones. Uh, here's another nice... This, again, would be a, like a machine stamp design, and then glitter would have been stamped on it. Or if this is paint, maybe dull paint is on that. Let's move through a couple more here. Again, when you see this stuff, I don't care if it's out of season. Even if I end up holding on to this for a year, for 10 bucks in the purchase price, it, it costs me 60 cents to list this for an entire year. So for 60 cents, I'll list it right now. We'll box it up and just get ready to ship it. That's all I'll have to worry about. Really nice examples here. When you add these all up, this is enough for someone to do a tree almost. Even this one's pretty interesting. You can see where the machine had to stop. It couldn't line itself back up, or that's as big as it was. And here's some of the teardrop ones here. People use these to do like recreations of um, hot air balloons, and I've got quite a few of them. These are just awesome, too, in my book. You can see the bluish colors and then the pink as well. These are just incredible, and I think that is the actual color of the bulb, and then they spray like a metallic coating over it to cover up part of it or roll it across it, if I'm not mistaken, because you've got the same here. It's darker red and then like a dulled red. And this one has blue. And then um, it's got, uh, let's see here, it's got the, I don't even know what color you'd call that, almost like an aqua bluish green. Rather interesting. Just a couple common ones here. Now these translucent ones are usually earlier ones, and it is an early 30s, 40s, maybe late uh, 40s. Here's another nice one here. I love all the ones with the scenes, the frosted ones. You'd be surprised how easily you can sell some of these. 
Yeah, here's some shiny brights. These are both shiny brights as well. I just have a few more here. I just wanted to shout this out. I always pick up these. Again, this isn't anything super fancy, but this is the typical average piece that I can find over and over again. I can get lots like this probably 15, 20 times a year, in all honesty, if I'm digging and going to the right places. Now, the best sources for these are local live auctions and estate sales. I do the best. I can find them at flea markets, but some of the time the dealers know what they got and they want to charge a ton of money for them, way over what they're worth in my book. Now, here's a couple more of these, and they're different. Uh, styles. Now this one's just a plain blue where you can really see the atomic pattern and then this one's a um, bluish on the bottom, bluish on the top, and then a white haze around it. Now I saved my favorite for last. This is my favorite. It reminds me of the vintage candy my grandparents used to have around the house all the time as well as like a peppermint stick. It's just an incredible uh, ornament here. Just fab in my book. This is what vintage Christmas is all about in my book. I mean, this is the epitome of what I would love to find. If I could find a whole set of just these, I would have some money. Now, on its own, it may be five or ten bucks, but it's just an incredible piece here. We do have quite a few vintage pieces that we've kept, like the Primo ones, for our own tree. But uh, I love vintage Christmas and vintage Halloween, so hopefully that inspires you. Don't give up on selling these. We sell them all year round. I never worry if Christmas has come or gone. They do sell a little better in Christmas time, but I don't mind for the 60 cents to pack them and, and photograph them and get them up. I always pack these usually ahead of time, too, so there's no chance of anything happening to them. They're going to sell. I mean, I'm sure of it. Usually I wrap these individually, so I'm going to spend uh, 10, 15 minutes probably to wrap all of these up here and carefully take care of them. I wouldn't be surprised if these still sell uh, right away after we put them up. But uh, anyway, that's the haul, 10 bucks. It was something I would have never expected to find there. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Just something to think about, something to still look for even after the holiday season. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.